Welcome to the Ultimate Meta Sounds Reference Guide, Wave Player, and Get Wave Duration. In this video, we'll be taking a look at these two nodes, discussing their relationship to one another, and how each of them functions. First, let's take a look at our Wave Player. If you have any type of pre-recorded asset in your Meta Sound, then the Wave Player node is going to be in your graph somewhere. The simplest definition of this node is that it's the media player for your pre-recorded assets. While there are quite a few inputs and outputs on this node, don't be intimidated by its complexity. Let's dive into these inputs and outputs to get a better understanding of what this node is as a whole. The first two inputs we have are trigger inputs that allow us to stop and start our wave player. The next input is where we define which audio asset is being played. This can be a single asset, or we can use a few other nodes to pull from an array of assets, like a sound bank. The start time allows us to set the starting point of the wave in case we want to start somewhere within our asset rather than right at the beginning. The pitch shift allows us to adjust the pitch of our audio asset using a float value. Every whole number equals one semitone, or half step. It's also important to note that this works by increasing or decreasing playback speed. So as you increase pitch, you will also increase the speed of the asset. Our next input is a Boolean input that determines if we want our audio asset to loop. If this is selected, once your audio asset has finished playing, it will play again without the node needing to be re-triggered. It's also important to note that when the audio asset is looped, the next time it plays, it will start from the beginning, regardless of the value entered into the start time input. If we want our loop to start at a different spot, we need to also define a value for our loop start input. Let's say we had one single music asset that contained an intro followed by a chorus that we wanted to loop. We could leave our start time at zero so the asset plays from the beginning, set our loop boolean to true, and set our loop start value to the time in seconds that our chorus begins. Now the asset will play all the way through once and then loop back to the chorus over and over again until it's stopped. The last input is our loop duration. By default, this value is set to negative one, meaning that regardless of where the loop starts, it will play from that point to the end of the asset. By changing this value, we can define how long the loop will play before returning back to the start of the loop. Using some arbitrary numbers, let's say our musical piece has an intro that's 10 seconds, a chorus that's 10 seconds, and then a verse that's also 10 seconds for a total duration of 30 seconds of music. Using the loop start set at 10 and our loop duration also set at 10, our asset will play through the entire piece, then loop back to where the chorus started and continue to loop just that chorus. Now let's move over to the output side of the node. The first five outputs we have are trigger outputs that allow us to pass through an execute signal based on certain points of playback. On play, will execute the moment the node is activated. On finished, allows us to output a trigger when the wave player node has stopped. I should point out that if your node is set with loop enabled, even though the wave asset itself may have finished playing through once and starts playing again, the node as a whole is still active and will not trigger an event. If we wanted to instead initiate a trigger when the asset is looped, then we have a trigger output especially for that. Jumping back up one to our on nearly finished output, we have the ability to execute a trigger when the audio asset is almost done playing. The time between on nearly finished and on finished is extremely small. Using our output log, we can see that these two outputs trigger so closely together that it's unnoticeable. However, the on nearly finished always triggers first. This allows us to queue up parameters that we may have set for whatever our on finish node is executing. The last output trigger, along with the integer and string outputs that follow, all deal with cue points. Cue points are like section markers, such as defining an intro, verse, chorus, and outro in a piece of music 
that is then embedded into the WAV file. Not every DAW allows you to create cue points, so it's important to reference the resource material for your specific DAW of choice to see if this is an option available to you. If you are able to create these cue points, then this node will allow you to utilize them in a couple different ways. We can trigger an event each time we pass a cue point. We can output the number associated with our cue point, like a chapter, and if we've named our cue points in our DAW, then we can also retrieve that name and send that value out as a string. The loop percentage outputs a float value between zero and one and tells us the percentage of the loop that has been played. If you've defined a loop start, this value will return to zero even though we may have started our loop 10 seconds into our full audio piece. The playback location works very similarly but returns the playback percentage based on the duration of the entire piece rather than just the loop section. The last two outputs we have are our audio outputs. This is what sends the audio signal to the next node, whether that be our final output or another node that is analyzing and processing the audio signal. I do want to mention that this node will always contain an out left and out right regardless of whether the meta sound is set to mono or stereo, or whether the audio asset inside the wave player is mono or stereo. The other node to talk about is our get wave duration node, and I promise this explanation will be much shorter than our wave player. This node allows you to pick an audio asset and automatically return how long it is in seconds. So if we have an asset that's two minutes in length, we will output a value of 120 seconds. What you choose to do with this information is entirely up to you. To see the full list of videos in this reference guide, click the link to the playlist in the description below.